Hey guys, Mel the Train Tutor here with a bit of a science lesson for you. Okay, right, first off, yeah, we're filming on the webcam and not on the high def cam, yeah, because, you know, I'm mainly talking on this one, we're not doing techniques, and it's a lot easier to film and edit. Okay, so forgive the quality, guys. Yeah, but, you know, this one's about the talkie. This is definitely a talkie. Uh, right, a science lesson, a bit different, eh? Okay, this started off as, what you call it, sort of a bit of theory. Yeah, to give you a, a bit of understanding on a technical sort of thing I was going to show you in a video. Yeah, now I'm going to show you that technical thing in a later video. And the reason being is because when I actually got down to it and I was writing me sort of notes of what I wanted to cover, I realized that the sort of information I'm going to give you uh, goes, it, its implications and its benefits and understanding it goes far beyond actually the technique I was going to show you. And is actually a benefit to anyone who uses acrylic paints. Now, we've talked about uh, paints in, in the past with my back to basic paints and additives and that sort of stuff. And in, in that video, we very much covered the sort of the practical applications, what brushes, what paints work well for what things, what brushes to use for what things, you know, what little additives you can use, that sort of stuff. OK, now this is a bit different. Yeah. Because what I want to do in this video is explain the science behind acrylics. OK, exactly how acrylic paint works chemically. OK, now don't panic. It's me. Yeah, you'll understand by the end of it. You know, I'll make it as easy as possible. But if you understand the, the, the science behind the acrylics, yeah, and how acrylics work, then it's a bit like what you call it. If I give you a recipe to do something or to make something, then you can just follow that recipe and do it. Yeah, but the moment something goes wrong, you're completely kiboshed, which is why in my videos I explain everything. So you you can sort of fault find, you understand the principles by why you're doing it. And this is exactly the same, but it's the same for paint. I want you to understand how acrylics actually work. Yeah, so that when we do more advanced stuff and when you're painting and when you're and whatever you're doing with acrylics, yeah, you can sort of take that knowledge and make it more personal more useful so anyway right are we ready well this is going to be a bit it's a bit of a retro video so let's cut cameras down eh okay guys these are acrylic paints okay we have house paint test pot we have model paint okay we have uh, a shade wash yeah and we have an old GW ink, yeah, an acrylic ink. They are all acrylic paints. Now, before you watch it, you go jumping down my throat and going, no, the, that's house, that's emulsion, yeah, that's model paint, that's water, that's a wash, that's an ink. Hear me out. Okay. Now, when it comes to paints, acrylic paints, they are made up of three components. Yeah. One is the pigment, the actual colour. Yeah, it can be organic, it can be inorganic. Uh, typically they are inert so they don't react with anything but basically they're ground up stuff into a powder okay on top of that yeah you have an acrylic binder now an acrylic binder is a plastic it's a soft version of plastic now you know the acrylic tokens and the acrylic what you call it, I haven't even got any the acrylic templates you can get it's exactly the same stuff that's just harder it's set harder yeah now uh let's very quickly before i actually start talking about what acrylic binder is and all that sort of stuff yeah the other component water okay now they're the three components the pigment as i've said it's in it, it can be it's inert it's organic or inorganic the only difference yeah pigment wise between all of these is how fine the pigments have been ground yeah quite thick medium pretty watch call it pretty thin pretty thin yeah that's it same pigments okay obviously not exactly the same pigment because they're different colors but you understand what i mean okay right now the acrylic binder okay and chemically this is where we're getting into science but you need to understand how this works okay acrylic binder is an acrylic is a polymer it's an acrylic polymer and what a polymer is it's a, a chemical that and 
I'm not a chemistry teacher, guys, so if I use the wrong words, please forgive me. I'm just trying to explain the bit. I'm trying to use the language I've got to explain, you know, the chemistry behind. Just forgive me, guys, if, you, if you're a chemist. And if you can really do a better explanation than this, yeah, throw it in the comments, guys. Yeah, because like I say, I'm a terrain builder, not a scientist. I could be a terrain scientist. Mike's a terrain artist. I could be a terrain scientist. I like that. Anyway, off topic. Right, back onto it. Right. Okay, so... It's a, it's a polymer chain. It, it's a lot of chemicals that like to stick together. And they do this because they're like little hexagon sort of arrangements. Yeah, and I, I, don't, I can't even show you, etc. There's no way I can draw it. But imagine lots of little hexagons that will like to link together. Now, when they're in loose form, yeah, and when, what you call it, they're in a paint, the water molecules get in between the hexagons, yeah, and they can't link together, yeah. So they're just floating around yeah along with the pigment now when we put when we brush it out yeah and it's exposed to air and thinned the water can evaporate yeah so those water molecules disappear off into the air and what you call it they evaporate leaving the the acrylic hexagons and those acrylic hexagons link together because the water can't stop them getting in between anymore so they can link together and they start to form a layer or groups OK, and in between all those links, what happens is that pigment that's ground up, that gets stuck in between them. OK, and that's how an acrylic poly, an acrylic what you call it, polymer binds your pigment to your what you call it, to your actual model or terrain or whatever you're painting. That's the actual chemical mechanism. The pigment gets trapped in between these sort of uh, hexagon like 3D cube things. Yeah, it all links together. Yeah, and it's all held down tight. And remember, acrylic is like a it's essentially a plastic. Okay, so when what you call it, when it's wet, you know, you can work with it. When all that water molecules have evaporated and it's all dry, it's tight enough that if you to add water again, yeah, the, those water molecules can't get in between those bonds, and that's why you can you can thin it and do things with it while it's wet. But once it's dried. It's waterproof, and that's the chemical reason why paint, acrylic paint, is waterproof when it's dried. Okay, <laughs> there you are. Practical application for you. Right, I need to take a, a quick mouthful of my brew because we're heavy talking here, guys. So, that's the acrylic binder part. Now, let's talk about water. Okay, typically in paints, yeah, uh, it is distilled water. OK, and what distilled water is, it's pure water. It has no real additives or anything like that or any minerals in it. Yeah, you you can buy distilled water. If you can't get distilled water, you can get deionized water, which is stuff that they use to top up car batteries. It's sold in virtually every garage. Yeah, it's dirt cheap and it's a close watch cut substitute. It isn't distilled, but it's a close substitute. Alternatively, you know, you can distill water yourself. You know, all it takes is a pan full of water on the stove. Then all you need is another pan to collect it next to it. Another pan ledged in the collection pan, but hanging over the, what you call it, the first pan. The first pan has a lid with a hole in it. Yeah, that puts steam up, then put a damp cloth on top of the top pan. Yeah, water boils, steam comes through the hole, gets collected at the top. Yeah, cold towel cools it, it condenses, it runs down, drops into the other pan to still water. You can use the same technique to purify urine. Yeah, but no matter how many times you do it, you know, you still think you're drinking <laughs> urine. <laughs> but anyway, that's the water element. Now, sometimes you hear of people using... Uh, what you call it, specialist thinners, using uh, things like alcohol and all that sort of stuff to work with acrylics. Don't, okay? Don't. Simply because they screw the acrylic up. Okay, they're not designed. They're not designed to be worked with acrylics. They're for your enamels and your 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 oils and all those sort of things. Okay, the the chemical solvent for acrylic is water simple as okay because when it's in paint form yeah and you want to thin it all you need to do is add water and therefore add more water molecules pushing apart those acrylic yeah and that's why paint gets thinner i mean paint is thick because that's the acrylic 
as we add water, it becomes thinner because the water goes up and it separates the gloop and it can't gloop. Okay, so that's the water element. So we've talked about the pigments, we've talked about the acrylic binder, and we've talked about the water. Now, quick little interesting bit for you. Yeah, as you know, in the UK, yeah, we call house paint emulsion paint. Okay, now chemically, if you mix the acrylic binder, yeah, and water, i.e., paint without the watch color, without the pigment, yeah, the chemical substance you come up with is called an emulsion. Emulsion paint. I wonder where it comes from. That's where. Okay, acrylic binder and water. Right, the other thing is, before we talk about, we go on to more practical applications, very quick, we, we said all these are the same. Now I did say the pigments are finer, yeah? Also, the what you call it, the uh, acrylic binder is finer, it's thinner, okay? As you go down through these, what you call it, mediums, mediums through these products, okay? So finer pigments, Finer acrylic, fine, finer acrylic binder, yeah, thinner acrylic binder, but all essentially acrylic paints. So they're the three components, and there's a little bit of the chemistry behind it. So what I want to do now is, obviously, these also have other things in, like, yeah, okay. Da, 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 da. In fact, no. Before we talk about that, let's talk about this, okay? Matte medium. Okay, this is Liquitex matte medium. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter what brand of matte medium you buy. Essentially, they are all the same product. Okay, so what's matte medium? It's emulsion. Basically, it is acrylic binder and water. It's paint without the pigment. Okay, now this is used as, it can be used as a sealer, not a varnish, but a sealer. It can be used as a fixative, mix it one by one, and you can fix pigments and weathering powders with it. Okay, you can dilute it, you can do all sorts of things with it. Yeah, but what I want to talk about is how you can use this stuff with your paints and with water. So what the hell is he talking about? Well, you know when we do washes, yeah, if you thin a paint down, lots and lots and lots, yeah, and you apply it really thin, yeah, you get a shiny effect, a sheen. So where does that sheen come from? Why does it go shiny? Well, you know we were talking about those hexagons, uh, hexagon cubie thingies. Someone please in the comments tell me what the real name of it is for. I have no idea. I really should have researched this better, shouldn't I, guys? Don't worry, you're learning. We're getting there. You know those hexagon things? Well, the reason it goes shiny is because you get essentially a very smooth layer, a very thin, smooth, smooth layer of them. Remember, acrylic shiny. Acrylic tokens are shiny, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and that's because we've thinned it down. Yeah, so you get this very thin, smooth layer. And because it's so smooth, yeah, it can't refract or diffuse the light being reflected off it. Yeah, which is why when you do washes and that sort of thing, and glazes, yeah, they're coming out shiny. Okay, so the other thing is, you know when you water a paint down so much that it can't stick, it, 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 like, it runs completely off the surface. Pigments don't stick, they only pool in recesses. The reason for that is the acrylic binder is so thinned down that there's not enough to go over an even covering and actually fix the pigment in a graduated fa fashion. So what happens is it flows off into the recesses and where it all clumps up there and it can actually bind and hold there, yeah, that's where it grips and it grips and concentrates the pigment. So if you were to add more acrylic binder, which has no pigment, okay into your wash mix there would be more acrylic binder to co to cover over that thin coating holding the pigment nice and smooth creating a thicker layer so it doesn't shine okay because there's more of those hexagons so there's more refraction more more what you call it diffusion of the of reflected light okay that's how it works that's how acrylic binder this, that's how the, the acrylic medium added to washes makes it matte. Okay, that's how it works. So, we talked about, right, I just need to recap. 
yeah that yeah we've talked about the pigments we've talked about the acrylic binder we've talked about how the acrylic binder works to hold things and to mat them down we talked about why it's dry right we should really just have a quick right just so you know things like all these products do have other little bits inside them you know little tweaks and that sort of stuff but they are all essentially acrylics this is raw paint you know these are all acrylic paints yeah moving on yeah we've got flow improver now i've shown this in another video and we talked about what you call it uh you know it, it dec decreases surface tension i've got lots of videos on flow improver and that sort of stuff yeah now what i wanted to do is sort of talk about when you use this sort of stuff and you, you why you need sort of slow dry and that sort of stuff chemically Okay, now chemically this doesn't re this doesn't do anything to acrylics. Yeah, it just affects the water. What's important is to understand that if you have too much flow improver, what you can do is, and you don't have enough acrylic binder in what your wash mix or whatever you're doing, what can happen is it can create a situation where it's like a super wash, and it it's so slick yeah that it will literally wash all the acrylic binder and the acrylic and the pigment off any smooth surfaces which is why you get really harsh what you call it harsh uh line effects when you do washes and that sort of thing okay so bear that in mind the other thing this has a slight amount of in is dryness retarder and you can also buy specific products which retard the drying of what you call water which basically means it slows down the evaporation of those molecules between the what you call it that's sitting in between those water molecules that are sitting in between the hexagon clumps of acrylic binder now the reason you use what you call it a uh, dry retarder is so that you don't get tide marks when you're working with very thinned paints okay so what happens chemically when you get tide marks well when the paints very thin and you've got a very thin amount of acrylic binder okay the water will evaporate really quickly yeah because it's spread thin over a large surface area effectively yeah what will happen is the water will start to shrink back and it will drag that acrylic binder, all those hexagons with them. Oh, yeah, still working, good. <laughs> it will drag all those hexagons and pigments back still with them until they reach a point where there's already sort of a ring of acrylic binder that's been set. There, there's already a load of hexagons that have been set and they come up to them like a tidal wave and they grab all the pigment and slam between those two points. Okay, and when you look down at your model, what you see is a stark ring of wash. Okay, now to avoid that, the things that we use is flow improver, so we get a more smooth application of water, but also dry retarder. Now this is already in most flow flow improvers because it, they work; they both benefit the same thing. Okay, but you can, if you're having problems, you can get specific dry retarders. So if you're dealing with washes and that sort of stuff, and you are getting those tide marks, yeah, then it's because what you call the water molecules are evaporating too quickly. You're getting that sort of clashing between preset or almost set acrylic and the acrylic being drawn back, and it traps those pigments. Yeah, so you need a dry retarder just so those what you call all that uh, acrylic. Uh, the acrylic sort of hexagons can settle and set before the water evaporates and draws and starts dragging them back and about. Yeah, so that's dry retarder. Right, guys, listen, uh, just give me a second. So, yeah, we've talked about the paints and we've talked about why they're all acrylics. We've covered what matte medium is, how we use it, you know, what effect it has on paints. I mean, throw this into a wash and you get like a super quick shade that isn't shiny do you know what i mean throw a bit of this into a wash and you get a, a graduated super quick shade that isn't shiny yeah but that's because you understand what's going on chemically you know the wash is the smooth fine pigment you know that's going to be able to give us that that's going to give us a thicker layer of our acrylic uh what you call it acrylic binder hexagons which is going to diffract light so the wash isn't going to be shiny that's going to what you call it that's going to slow the water drying down yeah, so we don't get tide marks. Okay, it's also make, going to make the water go on smoothly. So instead of it clumping in a ball, holding the pigment in a specific place, it'll spread out and carry that pigment uniformly. Okay, 
that's the chemicals behind it. Okay, right. I'm pretty sure I, I you know, I've given you a pretty good ground, grounding in this, guys. We had 20 minutes on it, and I hope now you have an understanding of how acrylic paints work. Okay, and why certain things aren't solvents for them. Yeah, check this out. Humble acrylic thinners. Based on your knowledge now, you know, as I know, that this is probably mainly just water with a bit of scientifically smelly alcohol -y stuff to pour in to make it appear like an expensive product. Unless someone at Humbro wants to come back and, you know, give me the science behind why this isn't water. I'd like to hear that. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, that's the facts, okay? So remember, pigment, understand how the acrylic binder works, understand the difference of pigments. So remember, you can get your own pigments, you can mix them in with a bit of this. You can add a little bit of this. Dil this is diluted roughly 10 to 20 times, by the way, just in, in case you grab a bottle and throw it into your paints. Yeah, make sure you dilute it. Uh, you know, but this and a bit of water, make your own paints. It's that, and it is paint, because those are the chemicals. Right, I think we've done that. So that is the science behind acrylic paints and how they work and how, you know, water affects the acrylics and the tide marks and all that sort of stuff. I really do hope you found this useful, guys. Uh, I hope, you know, let me know in the comments if this information has been useful to you or more importantly if you've taken it and used it with something yeah because for no other purpose than you know i'd be really chuffed to see it guys so shall we go cameras up let's do camera well, proper retro this one there's my ugly mug right guys uh i really do hope that you like this video you know i hope you found it useful uh as always, like it if you like it, share it if you think there's someone who will benefit from seeing it, you know. Uh, always comment, questions, anything you got to add, as always, comment bomb. Yeah, remember the Facebook Terrainiacs group if you want to share your terrain. It's a lovely group, we're almost up to about 800 members and tons, just purely terrain. It's just, you know, no sharing, no showcases. It's, it's awesome, guys. And finally, you know, if you really do like what I do, you know, you want to help me with, you know, my little campaign and all this sort of stuff, yeah, then, you know, check out Patreon and consider throwing me a book a month. I've always, yeah, there's no pressure to do that. And, you know, I'm going to carry on regardless whether you do or you don't, guys, yeah, because I enjoy it as much as you do. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next vid. ta -da.